What is up guys? I'm back with another manga ramble for all of you. And this one I'm actually personally excited about is it is one of my very favorite mangas. But at the same time, it's definitely one of the more darker and messed up stories. But also I feel that this manga does not get enough spotlight and is definitely one of the more obscure titles out there. So today, I'm going to be talking about Marusia Lago by Yoshimura Kana. So, let's get into it. So if I were to describe Marusia Lago, I personally describe it as another dark crime manga, like, for instance, Gangsta, or Black Lagoon, or Jormungand. However, unlike the other ones, Marusia Lago is essentially a more unknown title. But all in all, I've very thoroughly enjoyed this one. So to put it simply, Marusia Lago stars our main character, Kuroko Komori, pictured front and center, and essentially she is a very well-known serial killer who has been contracted by the police where, in exchange for keeping her life, she works for the police to track down other serial killers due to her expertise in the field. And essentially, during this whole process, she ends up finding a lot of women to hook up with throughout this series, which I'll get more into that a bit later. But anyways, I actually found out about this manga through the back of another ad as I was reading another manga review, and I thought to myself, why not? I might check this one out just to see what it's like. And after reading at least the first five volumes of this manga, I was instantly hooked due to the fact that this manga does not slow down with any of its subject matter. Like, this has got to be one of the bloodiest, one of the most messed up, one of the most raunchiest series I have ever read so far. And I have enjoyed every second of it. Currently, I'm up to 12 volumes as of right now. But there are actually a total of 19 currently out in English release. And I want to see it get my game up and actually continue to read the story because I don't know what it is. But the style of this manga definitely hooks you hook, line, and sucker. Now what I like about Yoshimura Kana's style here is that the way her manga is presented, every single volume essentially gives off this villain of the week style release where each volume focuses on a simple case that Kuroko needs to solve, along with her many sidekicks, or I guess you could say side chicks. But anyways, to put it simply, she tracks down other serial killers, and we get some from either a drugged-out steroid-using wrestler, to a full-on creepy serial killer who's obsessed with a young girl, to another young woman who is trying to essentially preserve her own beauty by sacrificing other beautiful young women. So, yeah. She deals with messed up stuff like that on a regular basis. And as I said, Yoshimura Kana is a genius for this, of essentially putting off this Villain of the Week volume. Now, how she does it is that she puts the main character there and essentially has their main villain cover an entire volume, but not completely finishing the story until the next volume. Which I think is a genius way of putting it, because then it makes you wonder how Kodoko is going to solve this or how she's going to get out of the situation. Because in all honesty, I have honestly been hooked from the start of this, just wondering what's going to happen next. It keeps me on my toes wondering what is going to happen next. And I personally enjoy that about the manga. But more than the story is the art style. Now in regards to the art style, oh boy, howdy is it crazy. It, this has got to be one of the more detailed mangas that I've read so far. I mean, honestly, just look at this. The sheer detail, the sheer use of color, just highlighting the action or the gory bits or whatever, really highlights that this is a spectacular manga that needs more attention. Seriously, Yoshimura Kana definitely works hard in bringing this exact, extraordinary detail to every single page. And honestly... This is what keeps me hooked, because you keep on wondering what's going to happen next. What is the next part of this gory action sequence going to be? It's violent, it's gory, it's fast-paced, and it keeps you hooked for the sheer amounts of detail. But more than that, it also has its more simple moments. Like, it goes from, like, highly detailed characters to sometimes going to, like, these formless blobs or, like, stick figures, which I guess probably helps to give the author a break to essentially just draw something simple for once in a while, because I can imagine after drawing and penning this much detail, that it must get exhausting. 
just the sheer quality and art style is what is another hook for me. This is on levels with others like, say, Tokyo Ghoul by Sui Ishida, or just any others that are this highly detailed that you can think of. Let me know in the comments of what this reminds you of. But in regards to favorite characters now, there's another thing. So if you were to ask me who my favorite characters were out of this entire series, the main three that I could possibly think of would be Koroko herself, her main sidekick, Hinako, and her main lover, Shio. Each one is awesome in their own way. Koroko is mainly like that sadistic killer and huge woman lover. That essentially you just know she's crazy, but you love seeing what the hell she does. And at times, she can come off as goofier or inattentive, but at the same time, you recognize that she is a massive killer, especially in certain scenes where she has to take the fight seriously. And again... She's just a riot to me, I swear. The creepiest thing, though, has to be how she can instantly turn her neck in so many ways that look extremely uncomfortable, but also highlight the creepiness of her character. Now, as for Hinako. Hinako, like I said, is essentially the, the sidekick of Koroko. And honestly, she's just a riot. I mean, seriously, she treats everything like it's a game, like dressing up either as a ninja or driving cars, and she looks like a preteen. Or at least a middle schooler or something. I, I don't know. But again, Hinako's just a riot because she does not take the situation seriously at all. She's just completely oblivious and just constantly asking Kuroko for food. And I'm, from what I'm seeing here, Hinako actually views Kuroko as somewhat of a mother figure. Which is pretty sweet in and of itself. But honestly though, Hinako is just crazy. <laughs> she is absolutely crazy. I swear. This girl can drive cars, be a stealth operative, while at the same time having the innocence of a child. I have no idea how the hell that works, but it does. But now as for Chio, I did not think much of her at first until she had her major spotlight in Volume 4, which is really Chio's time to shine, as essentially Kuroko, from her perspective, had been brainwashed in the main story or the main arc of this volume. So what does Chio do? She doesn't beg for somebody else to do it. Nah. This girl straps on a samurai robe and a full-fledged katana and wages a one-woman war to get her girl back. And honestly, that was just immediately cemented in my mind that Chio was an absolute badass. Granted, she does not agree with Kodoko's attitudes in times of just hooking up with a bunch of other women. But at the same time, she keeps coming back. And honestly, the fact that she still sticks with Koroko despite that is crazy, but also a bit admirable. And the fact that she's also the daughter of a famous Yakuza definitely highlights the fact that just her sheer badassery. But these three are definitely some of my favorite characters throughout the series. But also, one more thing about Koroko, and this is honestly the funniest thing for me. Koroko has got to be one of the thirstiest characters I've ever seen throughout anime and manga hell. She puts famous anime perverts like Jiraiya and Roshi to shame. <laughs> Just the sheer regards of her thirst cannot be matched as far as I'm aware. <laughs> and seriously, just her antics just absolutely crack me up. <laughs> Honestly though, she puts Jiraiya and Roshi I think they got competition at this point with her. And honestly, it's just a riot to watch her instantly start flirting with a beautiful woman as soon as they get within her sight. <laughs> honestly, though, it's just a riot to watch, to read this. And I honestly wish Murcia Lago was an anime. But, again, that doesn't seem likely with just the sheer brutality within this manga. But... Let's get to the final thoughts, shall we? As well as the overall score. So overall, just because for personal enjoyment, I have to give Motosia Lago a solid 10 out of 10. Now, if you guys want to see more series with more badass females, I would recommend the mangas of Black Lagoon and Jormungand, both of which are excellent series by themselves, and each has a badass female character as the main lead. 
But all in all, they are also enjoyable because they are similar dark crime anime, with Black Lagoon being more about piracy and Yormungan being more about arms dealing, rather than serial killers like Murcia Lago. But all in all, if you guys have stuck around to the end of this video, thank you so much for listening to this crazy man's ramblings, and I hope you all have an awesome day. And if you'd like more manga reviews, please let me know in the comment section down below. Or if you have any suggestions, also let me know in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, feel free to leave a like, comment, and or subscribe. And once again, thank you all for listening. This is Rambling Collector, signing off.